This could be like one of our most important YouTube episodes that we've ever done, at least in my book. We get turnips here that might be, you know, you know, size of a baseball stop, but they're like actually like pumpkins out there. It's like what in the world? I've been fertilizing and lime and doing everything. I was like, why are they still not growing? Nice to meet you. Ashley Thompson. Hi, Ashley. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah. So, has he met everybody else already? Yes. Yeah. 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 Backyard field. Backyard field. Chris Jones. My name's Braden Thompson. Brad Thompson. So, in high school, I was in this class. It's a CEO class. Kind of helps students learn how to be entrepreneurs and businessmen. And I was making manure pellets from our turkey litter that we have. We've raised turkeys in our family since 1987, my wife and I since 2004, and we've sold, hauled and sold manure in the past. My son had came to me and said, do you think we could pelletize this stuff? And they, they got together, found this pellet mill, presented it to us, and we thought, well, that kind of seems like a lot for a high school CEO project. So we ordered a small pellet mill and did some trial runs. 11, 12 o'clock at night, the boys are down there working on making pellets. And when they came home after a couple nights down there and they had a five gallon bucket full. They said, we, we made some, you know, and said, oh great, you know, this is awesome. We've got, uh, we're invested and we have a five gallon bucket of pellets. So we're off and running. Try to just, you know, every year, how can we get better? How can we do things better? How can we have better nutrition and habitat? Everything else you can think of for deer. And this is just another, another part of that puzzle that we're trying to put together. We talked a little bit about, uh, you know, the herbicides, the pesticides that you want to, you know, keep out of your body. But you know, you're feeding your deer. You're spraying all your fields with this stuff and deer are eating it, you're getting that as you're eating your deer too. So it's not like totally organic, like, you know, like we like to think it is sometimes. So we're working on like with analogics, uh, you know, some of organic herbicides and pesticides and things like that. But especially for any organic farmers, this is what they're using. They're using the, the turkey manure pellets like this. This is Brad's uh, main, main audience is organic farmers and you know ultimately that's what we'd all like to be and so we're just moving another another step in that direction by you know using compost stuff you need to get rid of anyway using turkey manure stuff you have to get rid of anyway and like like brad mentioned this is all uh you know tested by the dnr and the fda or whatever make sure there's no e coli there's no diseases there's no you know anything like that because the way they flash dry it it gets hot enough long enough to kill any of the bacteria and, and all that kind of stuff in there so uh, you don't have to worry about that this is another way to do it organically 
and we just do it in a way that's the best thing for our deer and for ourselves and for our soils. So like now I'm out right now, I have we loaded that thing way over the top. So I'm pretty close to about where I, where we want to be on it. And I'll go back and just pick up where I left off on it. Well, number one, we'll start right back at the beginning for everybody is we have a farm in Illinois and Kevin Boyer, a friend of ours, he has elite uh, consulting. So I, yeah, so I have him and he's been a friend of mine for a long time. So we've been, he's been handing my soil down there and we kind of come together for food plots and what we want where and I'll go down there and help. We'll, we'll all plant it together with Josh and everybody down there. But we started looking at, he was basically in charge of the soil down there. And it was terrible because it was just, it was just in, basically hay fields, but there never been any animals on it. So the organic matter was terrible. But I was just amazed at looking at his soil samples it, over four and a half years now, how we got the pH and everything. I mean, it is like phenomenal soil. We're getting turnips out there. Like when we get turnips here that might be, you know, you know, size of a baseball stop, but they're like actually like pumpkins out there. It's like, what in the world? And you did that with some turkey manure that you got Yes, and so he, I was like, how okay. are you doing that? He goes, well, we're there. you need to get the organic matter up, you need to get, you know, you know, there's turnips and all that kind of stuff, we'll need boron, and, you know, say your phosphorus should be at 20. He's like, no, you need at 40. And they'll say, like, potash should be, like, at 150 to 2. He's like, no, 400. Because then that might not be feasible for a row crop farmer because you got to you weigh your cost benefits. Yeah, but if you're doing food plots, you just have a few food plots to do, you can get that for sure. And like last year was like the first year for how dry it was ever, 25 years of us being here. It was the first time that we ever had some fields fail that just didn't come up. I mean, there was two fields of corn even that I just had to disc up midstream and say, okay, we got to put brassicas in here. You know, the manure, especially in the organic type fertilizer, whether it's turkey manure or chicken manure or hog manure, whatever it is that you have access to or you're using, you know, really changes that tilt in the soil and helps with the water retention. Mm -hmm. So when you do get that little bit of rain that you got, it, you're you're hanging on to it a little, right. bit, a little bit better. You just know. hit that question. We were asking, we were talking about that on the way over here. It's like okay. how much that like will retain in your soil once it's done. It'll yeah. definitely help build it. Yeah. You know, yeah. Build all that humus in your soil, and the and the till, you know, just the microorganisms and the things in the dirt kind of come alive a little bit better with that, especially without the use of a chemical that's potentially yeah, killing those. Killing it. You know, right. it's, it's grabbing but, a hold of the manure and then helping yeah. disperse it. Right, because I would say you want the worms and everything else yeah. that bust yeah, up your hard pads. I suppose when you put an anhydrous on, you're just smoking everything. Yeah, they're smoked. Yeah. It's dead like that. <laughs> Yeah, you know, not making it through that. <laughs> right. And so we were talking about that too. It's like, what do you think about if you're putting on like regular fertilizer, how much of that when you get runoff into your creeks and stuff like that, how is that different compared to this? Because this, I'm assuming, is just going to break down basically into dirt almost where you're not going to get the runoff of yeah, that. For the most part, the rain will just soften them up. The first rain, they'll still be there. They swell. Almost. They'll swell yeah. up. Oh, yeah. Kind of look like a Cheeto yeah. the next day. Uh -huh. they'll, they'll just swell up. And then the next rain, or a few days and they just they're gone they disappear the yeah, next rain so, yeah. will beat them down to, to mm -hmm. gone and then uh you know the worms and the microorganisms and the dirt will just attack them and the bacterial good bacteria will start growing and you'll be feeding that and they'll just be multiplying by the billions you normally we would just get a soil sample in the past it would just be kind of what's your p and k and nitrogen and your ph and maybe maybe it would have organic matter but not normally so when we start getting the soil samples now putting all that stuff on there you can see how deficient we are like in boron and things like that that are and sulfurs and zincs and everything and just looking through the samples of your pellets and right. so it has all that stuff the sulfurs yeah. the zincs yeah, the and all those micronutrients that you're not getting in regular fertilizer so when you just go and say okay i want to you know a lot of people just say okay i want triple 15 or something just the bags of that you're not getting any of that and so i'm looking at some of my fields here now that i'm seeing that I thought were going to be terrible, ones that we just used to grow just great super turnips and stuff in brassica mm -hmm. fields. And it's like, I've been fertilizing and lime and doing everything. And it's like, why are these still not growing? And so now we start looking at this, at my samples that we took a, a more detailed look, like, well, yeah, we got plenty of phosphorus, but the available phosphorus is like nothing is it has no sulfur no in it. Loose, yeah. You're looking at all these micro stuff that, you know, and the zinc and the boron especially, everything is just like super low here. And it said that, talking with Kevin, he's like, that's what you, we need boron to 
to grow, especially those brassica type things. And you have all those micronutrients are in this, which you don't get in a regular fertilizer. And what's usable for the plant. And just looking through your, your list of what's usable in the first year, those numbers are super high, in, and especially in the phosphorus level. Now, like the fields that we've had for 20 years, like my pH is always pretty good, like six, five to seven, you know, right in that range. And everything is close, <clears throat> but more on the lines of that, you know, 25 for, for phosphorus and the potassium, like maybe in the 130s instead of 400s. Organic matter, maybe at 2.5 instead of 3.5 and 4. And like I said, now the sulfur levels, we talked about that a little bit too. It's like that never was a problem before because you need that sulfur to free the, the, um, the phosphorus in, in the soil. And before it would diesel before taking the sulfurs out of, you know, yeah. diesel engines and diesel fuel and all that stuff. Every time it rained, you put a tons on there. So nobody ever thought about it, but now right. it's getting so sulfur deficient. You start looking at these, I'm like, looking at this, I'm like, wow, I mean, I've got 30 available, but it's only, it's only using 10. You say, okay, we got to boost the sulfur levels, but now just looking through your, the lab tests of your pellets and stuff, what, you know, we've got in there for sulfurs and all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> That's what the difference has been on our Illinois farm and getting all that stuff to grow like that. So we're just like, okay, we got to start thinking about that. But down there it was easy because there's a bunch of turkey farms down there. He would just get the manure from there, come out and spread it. So well, what do we do here? So just, what, two weeks ago we were down yeah, there? Yeah, it was literally. We brought us that bucket from Organic Works, and I was like, man, we could spread this. Yeah, those so are gave, gave Brad a call, and I was like, yeah, that works out perfect. We'll just truck some up and, and give it a try here. And, uh, and, and But the whole reason, I mean, it's funny that we came up with this, you know, that we met Brad here, because we were just, we just got like a blood test for, you know, just to genetically all this different stuff, just to see, make sure you're healthy and everything. And I always come back, came back, you know, high in DDT which is pretty normal probably for most people just for what you're eating now with all the herbicides and pesticides and stuff on it. So we're just like, man, we were, you know, cause you always, ah, it's, it's Roundup, you know, it's everywhere, whatever. Okay. And I have not said that. I actually had a total different stance. I had been on that for the last few years and they all kind of blew me off, honestly. They were kind That's of like, That's what I meant. Eh. I blew you yeah. off. Like, ah, it's like, Roundup. Yeah, I was like, I'm telling you, I'm like, this is bad. This is like, everybody blows it off. Like, it's no big deal, but I know we can do better. I mean, that's my thing. I'm like, I just feel like there's better stuff out there that we can be doing for yeah, and so we kids always and dogs and mm -hmm. deer and everything, you know? Yeah. You know, you eat all, everything that you shoot, we're eating it ourselves as well. But, you know, if you're just dumping glyphosate and everything else on, the, on your fields that they're eating on, that's just coming right through them as well. So really for me, number Number one, a close number two. I put a close I was number like, two. Is deer, <laughs> I want to get grow the biggest deer and the healthiest deer in the food plots right. and stuff because yeah, there's nothing worse than coming out like last year. We did so much work and spent all the money on fertilizer and all the stuff on these fields and, and you get nothing. I mean, last year the biggest deer I was hunting, and Justin and James will tell you that, it was like on a dirt field and nothing grew up there. I mean, we planted it, started it with clover and it burnt up to nothing. We tried it in wheat. And that was, it was so dry, nothing. But it's the same kind of weather down in Illinois. We got alfalfa just green and lush. You can see the total difference between when we hunted down there and here. And that's all in the soil. So I was like, well, after looking at the samples like and everything this year, <laughs> I know, Kevin was smoking us. <laughs> Well, we just finished up what we could. It just started to rain hard enough. We started sticking to our tires and everything, and we got at least most of what we wanted to get accomplished accomplished. We got 50, 50 tons of uh, Organic Works pellets out and 50 tons of uh, compost out, but uh, we didn't get everything planted that we wanted to. See, we got it all worked in and in a lot of these fields, and we did get a couple of planted last night, a couple of our crushed pro clover fields, and I think maybe one alfalfa field that they got in last night. But this could be like one of our most important YouTube episodes that we've ever done, at least in my book, because you know, food plots is such an important part of what we do. And like since we bought a lot of these farms over the years, it seems like the quality of our food plots has been getting less and less and less. When we first started planting brassicas, we had, you know, you know, small pumpkin or volleyball sized turnips, and now, like last year, it was down to maybe the size of golf balls on a lot of them. And of course, over the years, you know, you're getting soil tests, you're liming, you're putting your fertilizer, and you're just, you're, you're getting your soil samples, but mostly it's just the nitrogens and pH on those. 
But, you know, so everything seemed like it was good. And I was just kind of attributing a lot of this to just how dry it's been. It seems like since, you know, in the last 20 years, it seems like it's getting drier and drier and drier. So you're just like, well, we can't get stuff to grow because it's so dry. So we just did a deep dive in on it this year, and started getting all the, the micronutrients and things in, in your soil samples. You start seeing, you know, your sulfurs are super low, your boron is super low, you know, all kinds of the micro stuff and the, the you know, the organic matter is so low. So to me, this is what I'm assuming is the solution to the problem that we didn't know that we had. So once again, thanks you guys for watching. We're gonna, we'll be keep updating you on these, some of these fields that we planted, you know, last night, those should be coming up here, weather permitting here in a couple, in a couple weeks and some of these fields behind us, we'll get all this stuff planted. We'll, we'll start showing you our results and then, you know, we'll get in more soil samples next year and see what that's done. So it's an ongoing process, but you know, doing it the conventional way, what I had been doing, you'd be like, okay, we can get the, these fields back into, you know, working shape within three or four years. Well, I don't have three or four years. I need to have great food plots this year. So this side, what, is, what I believe is the solution. You can see with this little bit of rain, how these turkey pellets are already just turned into mush and like, you know, melting into the soil basically. So this is available pH and organic matter and the sulfurs and the zincs and the borons and all that stuff available right now for my seeds that I put in the ground right now. So again, thanks for watching. We'll keep you updated on this. And if you want any information on Organic Works, uh, you can check out their website. We'll print it at the bottom and Brad Thompson and his whole family that was out here helping us. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. And I'm sure we're gonna have great results.